Today we're going to do a little test recording with the new Blackmagic Video Assist 4K. Now the first main advantage of the Video Assist 4K is the external screen. It's 7 inches, so you got a lot more real estate to see what you're actually filming, which is really important when you're trying to make sure everything's in focus. The other benefit of the Video Assist 4K is the fact that you can record externally to higher quality codecs. Alright, so let's talk about that first main advantage, the quality of the screen. This screen is great indoors, but outdoors it's a little bit more challenging. Now we've got a lot of cloud cover today, so it's not even as bright as it could be, and it's still somewhat challenging to see the screen. It's not impossible to see it, you can definitely make out what you're filming, but there is definitely a little bit of glare as you can see, as well as it's not the brightest screen out there. There are some other options that might be a little bit better suited for filming outside, but this isn't terrible, it's just okay. I talked about this a little bit in my first impressions, but there's no LUT monitoring, there's no anamorphic support, there's no time lapse. There's a lot of features that other recorders and screens have that this just doesn't have in its current stage. I'm hoping that Blackmagic will upgrade the Video Assist 4K with some firmware updates, but we'll see. As it is right now, it's very bare bones and very limited. It's okay, it's functional, you have some grids, you have zebras, you have peaking. But other than that, there's not a lot of bells and whistles like you'll get with some of the other options out there. Right now I'm recording a bunch of different clips on the Video Assist 4K and I'm starting with ProRes Proxy because that's the lightest weight codec you can record on this thing. But it is still better than most internal codecs. Now we're starting there and I am recording Vlog L on the GH4. One thing that's already starting to make itself apparent is the amount of storage you're going to need if you're recording ProRes HQ and some of the higher quality versions of ProRes. Now the Video Assist takes SD cards, the new UHS-2 cards, and right now the cards that I have are 64 gigabyte cards. But when you switch to HQ and even ProRes 422, that time that you have to record is very, very limited. For example, I've only recorded a few short test clips and with a 64 gig card, it's saying I have about 10 or 9 minutes left of recording. So a 64 gig card for about 11 or 12 minutes max is kind of crazy, especially if you're used to shooting internally. The GH4, for example, with a 64 gig card, you can record in 4K for an hour and 25 minutes. That's a lot more, significantly a lot more, than if you're using one of these or other external recorders to record ProRes HQ and 4K. The gigabytes get eaten up really, really fast, and so that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're looking at switching to something like this. A quick note about my setup. This is not ideal. I bought one of these cheap Hot Shoot a Quarter 20 mounts, and the video assist is a little bit too heavy for it, so it can easily come loose, and you definitely don't want that to happen. I would recommend some other solution other than mounting it to the Hot Shoe. Probably a rail kit, mount it externally somewhere, something other than this, because this isn't gonna cut it. Another problem I'm starting to run into is the batteries. Now I've got some off-brand LP6s, not the official Canon ones, these are the cheaper, more affordable ones you can find online. And these are a little bit older, so keep that in mind too. But the Video Assist is eating through these batteries, so I've actually got to get back to recording because I only have the two. So if you plan on being mobile for a full day, you're going to need a lot of batteries on hand. It is nice that you can hot swap one to the other so you don't ever have to stop to change batteries but it eats through them really fast. Let's look at some actual footage because I'm sure that's what most people are interested in. So I've got some of these shots loaded up here in speed grade. And as you can see, I've just got a basic primary applied. I don't want to get into any LUTs because that just causes arguments and people go back and forth over what's the best process. So everything you're going to see is very simple and straightforward. You might have a different method for grading this stuff. That is totally fine. I'm not here to tell you how to do it. I just want to show you some examples. So in this first shot, you can see I've got ProRes Proxy here, Vlog L, and this is a basic primary I've applied just to add some contrast and expand the dynamic range. So if I click that off, you can see how it was initially shot. Here I've got my waveform open so you can see what's going on with the color here. You can see my highs, mids, and lows. And there we have that. Now this is ProRes Proxy. I can also bump up the saturation. This is an additional primary I've added just to max out the saturation so you can kind of see how it starts to break apart. And it's actually looking pretty good. It's not too bad. There are some problem areas up in the, the blues or the cyans up here in the clouds that I'm not sure if you'll be able to see once this is final on YouTube, but it's some, some minor compression artifacts that you can notice if you're pixel peeping, but in motion, it's likely not anything that anyone's going to really notice. 
So now let's check out ProRes Lite for this exact same shot. Nothing has changed. This is that basic primary just to add some saturation and contrast. And things are looking pretty good here as well. We can do the same thing where we add that saturation and the clouds may be a little bit better, but it's overall very, very similar. For the next shot, I recorded standard ProRes 422. This is 10-bit coming out of the GH4. And again, we've got that same primary. I'm just copying the exact same look from each shot to the next. So nothing is changing. These are the same settings. Set the saturation to the uh, double saturation there. And the clouds, eh, it's okay. Uh, it's certainly, it's certainly better, but at this point you're really pixel peeping to see the difference. Yes, you're getting a little bit better sharpness. Yes, you're getting a little bit better color with each of these higher versions of ProRes. But at, at what point, you know, at what point do you want to eat up the extra file space? And that's a decision you have to make. Now let's look at ProRes HQ. That with that basic primary, and now let's add that extra saturation on there. And when you look at the difference between HQ and Proxy, it's really not that big of a leap. You're getting a lot more um, megabits per second with ProRes HQ, but the trade-off might not be worth it for you if you're concerned about hard drive space because ProRes Proxy looks pretty good too. And this is all 4K. Again, uh, Vlog L doing a slight little grade. Your end result may be a little bit different than mine, depending on how you like to grade. I don't want to get into that, just doing a basic color so we can look at what's going on here. So now I've also got a clip that I recorded internally on the GH4, same Vlog L, same exact setting, same exposure. There's that basic primary. That's what it looked like initially. So we're you know pushing that a little bit, but this is still a very muted look. Now we're going to amp up that saturation and even this, the difference between this and the uh, proxy stuff, the color is actually different, which is a little bit surprising that the HDMI output, the color varies slightly because, again, this is the exact same settings applied to both of these clips. So from the internal and the proxy files, you can see that there is quite a bit of difference in the original source color, but it's probably something you could take care of with a few tweaks to the color profile or the color settings that I'm applying down here. You know, maybe this is a little bit more green than the proxy file. So it would really just come down to uh, how you like your footage to look. So even for what the GH4 is doing internally, it's still pretty good. Now, I'm not gonna say that there's not a benefit to recording externally, but it, it might be a trade-off that you may or may not wanna make just depending on how much hard drive space you wanna eat up. Let's move on to this shot. So again, this is ProS Proxy starting at the lowest setting the Video Assist 4K will do. And there's the original shot. Again, trying to overexpose with Vlog L. You always wanna shoot a little bit over so you can pull that stuff down. You never wanna be boosting Vlog L. It doesn't look very good. Uh, so we've got a primary applied and we can do the same thing where we double that saturation and we get something like that. But let's double it again to really stretch this codec and see what we have here. Now, you'll see on, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I can see it. There's some slight, um, almost like interlacing artifacts. Now it's not interlaced footage, but it's getting these kind of scan lines through it um, when we're pushing the saturation this much. Obviously this is probably nothing you would ever color like this, but we're just stressing the codec here to see what it can handle. And we are getting some you know, lines in here that you know, showing it it's, it's probably at its limit to push it any further would be a, a challenge. And this is important for when you're shooting stuff that's not uh, exposed properly. So, you know, like in that original shot, you know, I've got, I've got, this is, this is how you want to shoot vlog a little, you know, two stops over, um, looking good here. But if you have something that's, you know, didn't white balance properly, or it was overexposed or underexposed uh, too much or too little, you're, uh, you may be in for some trouble. And that's where the flexibility of these higher quality files come into play. Now let's look at ProRes Lite for the same shot. Again, we're gonna double that saturation and then let's double it again. And this one, now all those lines are gone. So uh, from the light versus the proxy, there is a, a difference, but we are getting some artifacts up here where the codec is just kind of breaking apart and the color's not quite accurate. And it, we're really stressing it, but this is probably not a look you would ever go for, I imagine. 
Now let's take a look at regular ProRes, double that saturation, and let you look at that for a second, and let's double it again. So those problem areas up here and kind of throughout are looking better, but it's still, um, you know, some of that compression might just be the nature of the way the camera is reading the sig uh, signal off the sensor. And here we go for HQ. We're gonna do 2x saturation and the max saturation. So there are some, let me see if I can zoom in here to 100%. Let's really look at this. Because this is the, you know, the ideal uh, setting that you would have for uh, recording. If you have a ton of hard drive space, you'd probably record ProRes HQ for that optimal quality. Now let's look at the internal stuff I recorded on the GH4. So uh, if you're familiar with the GH4, you can't record externally and internally at the same time if you're outputting 10-bit over HDMI. So I unplugged the HDMI, was able to record internally. And here's that initial primary. There's it, how it was shot. So very flat, a little overexposed, like you're supposed to with V-Log. And there's that primary, the secondary, or the uh, additional primary doing the saturation, and now that final saturation for that double bump. And you can really see up here in the greens, it's just going kind of nuts. Well, it doesn't really like how hard I'm pushing it. But if we compare that to the HQ stuff, you can see that there is a significant color shift. You know, there's a difference between what's being recorded internally versus what you're getting externally. Proxy is a pretty lightweight codec, but it is more intense in terms of file space than the internal codec. So in terms of quality from a megabits per second point of view, GH4 internal is the least uh, heavy, uh, you know, in terms of how much hard drive space is going to take up. Then it would be proxy, then it would be light, then it would be ProRes, and finally HQ. And the file sizes between these things are radically different. I mean, on a 64 gig card with internal, you can record 4K for like an hour and 25 minutes. If you switch to HQ, you're looking at a little over 10 minutes. So the, the, the file sizes get big very, very fast. So you could probably grade this GH4 internal to match a little bit better with HQ, but I just wanted to keep it as similar, just uh, you copying the exact same file uh, settings from one to the next in terms of the color look I'm giving it. Now let's go to this shot. For this, I wanted to shoot Cinelike V because not everyone's going to be shooting Vlog L, and I totally understand that. If you are using an external recorder, you're probably going to be shooting Log at least some portion of the time. But people were asking about Cinelike V or some of the other Cinelike settings that aren't a Log profile. So this is right out of the camera, uh, or out of the HDMI rather, recorded to the uh, Video Assist 4K. And I don't have any settings on here, but let's turn on this primary so we can kind of see that look, how that looks. Now you'll see if um, if you look over here at the waveform, notice this patch of the sky right here is actually clipping. It's past 100, so that's that's pure white right there. But I'm actually able to bring that down and get that information back, and that's really really cool. I didn't expect this, but it it works. So again, this is as shot. This is straight out of the HDMI from the Video Assist 4K. I pulled this in here and it said, oh, you're overexposed. You know, you're blowing that sky. Well, I have all that information. Let me, let me actually show you what that looks like here. So um, when I'm, when I was coloring, you can come in here and you just pull your whole, all of your color and stuff. You can pull it down. You can actually get that information back. So um, by doing that, you're able to save some of those highlights and get some of that cloud detail back, which is really cool. Now, this is ProRes Proxy, Cinelike V. It is looking pretty good. I, I really don't have any complaints with this footage and how it looks. It's certainly better than the internal stuff, but I wouldn't say by much. Uh, you know, the, the trade-off, it, it really depends on the project. If it's something, you know, personal or really low budget, you're probably fine with the internal codec on the GH4 specifically, but if you need that extra quality, the external recorder definitely adds it. Now, let's look at this shot. This is ProRes Lite, same thing, add that primary, and boom, we get that detail back. So we're actually getting that cloud detail back. It's looking good, and you can see even like the, the color here and the waveform, how kind of more jagged this is than even the light version, a lot smoother 
tones in here in the waveform. It's not a, a visual, a big visual distinction, but it's just good to know that in the codec, the light version is actually giving you more color information. So that is good to see, but light is uh, quite a bit heavier than proxy. I think it's actually uh, twice the data rate. So there, there is a, a big jump from proxy to light. It might not actually be twice. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but um, it is significant. Now let's look at the GH4 internal stuff that I recorded because here, so sky's blown. Here we got, uh, it's going off the charts here. Now the clouds did move a little bit, so that's why it's a little bit more overexposed. But here, let's try and do the same thing we did with the proxy and the light. And what do we get when we add that primary? and we pull it down, let's do that, that'd be good. That is still clipped. There's not any extra data up here past 100%. So again, to show you that, because this is really important, this is really important to know, is that when you pull this offset down, there's no extra data there. Compared to the ProRes files, where when we're pulling that down, so see it's it's blown out, same deal, over 100%, when we pull that down, there's extra information up there that we're getting back. Now, at a certain point, it does clip. Well, let's uh, pull that down one more time. At a certain point, it does clip. You know, you're not going to just have infinite dynamic range, but you do have more than what the files come in at. So if you do blow your highlights and you record externally, you may be able to get some of that detail back compared to if you record internally, you're not saving any of that. If it's gone, it is gone. I don't know what just happened. I think it's the battery power just got too low but the screen just like faded. It kind of wigged out, it got a little glitchy, and then it just faded to black. The fan was still running, but I couldn't power it off. I, I don't know if I can power it back up. Let's try. But I just started recording and it died. And yeah, the battery looks really low. I wish it had given me a warning saying it had low battery, but it didn't, it just died. Now it's saying both batteries are a little over than half. So I have no idea what's going on with this thing. I don't know if it's the batteries, if it's the way that they interact with the screen, but I've got more battery power now, somehow. Like this was not the case a minute ago. It died from lack of battery power, I assume, and now it's back up and running with one battery at 50%. Weird. I think I figured it out. It seems like the Video Assist is using more battery power with the higher quality ProRes codecs. So when I powered it back up, it defaulted to ProRes Lite and it was saying, you've got 50% battery, you're good to go. But the moment I switched it to ProRes 422 and started recording, it died again. I took out the battery, powered it back up, and then I tried ProRes HQ, and that was even a more drastic failure. It just went to black immediately. The fan didn't even keep running, it didn't fade to black, it just died. So. The lighter weight ProRes codecs seem to be taking less battery than the higher quality ones. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm done out here for the day. I only had those two batteries. I thought they were gonna last a little bit longer than they did, so I only got a few test clips. I can't leave things there. I know people would have their comments if I didn't show skin tones, so let's take a look at some skin tones. Uh, I just recorded myself, make it super simple. Now you can see how this was shot. This is ProRes Proxy Vlog L. Again, here's that waveform. You can see how we're clipping at that 80% mark, but let's add that primary and we can see, uh, this is again, super basic grade. You might have your own uh, workflow. You might have specific LUTs you like to use. I, I, I wanna say it again, cause I, I really, it doesn't matter how you grade cause everyone's got their own subjective opinion and what's gonna look the best. This is just an example to show you the difference between the ProRes files and the internal stuff and what you're able to do with one of these external recorders. So we've really expanded that waveform. I've done some color tweaking down here, but really not anything too significant cause we're just working on that primary. We're not doing any secondaries or any curves or anything like that and this looks pretty good. You can see there's some kind of compression up here, maybe, you know, kind of like a cyan magenta thing that, that tends to pop up when you're shooting with Vlog L, but overall it's looking good. It's sharp, it's nice, and for ProRes Proxy, you know, the, it, it just because it says proxy doesn't mean it's bad, okay? Um, when you, people shoot raw, they make their proxy files and it's really easy to think that, oh, well, like proxy, that's, that's not what I wanna shoot. I wanna shoot higher quality but you have to make that value judgment because it may or may not be worth the hard drive space 
when you're shooting and, and what the budget is. You really have to think that through because just because it says proxy doesn't mean it's bad. It looks pretty good. But let's look at ProRes Lite. Uh, same kinds of issues. Let's look at the waveform over here, the difference between this and proxy. You know, it's it's minimal. It, it's it, it Technically, yes, there's more data, it's better, but the, the visual difference is minimal, especially when you're probably compressing all this stuff for the web on output anyway. So lots of things to consider. You can't just say uh, one thing's better than the other because every project is different. So let's look at regular ProRes. Uh, same, same kind of look, same kind of feel. Again, I'm copying the exact same color information uh, in terms of the look I'm applying, all these settings, the exact same clip to clip. And there really isn't any visual huge screaming difference between one to the next. Now let's look at HQ. Finally, tons of file space taken up with these HQ files. And visually, the difference between this and proxy is rather minimal. It's probably a little bit sharper, probably a little bit more color information, but from a, a practical standpoint, there may not be that big of a difference for you and for your needs. It just depends, again, on you and what you like to shoot. I keep saying the same things, but it's because they're really important. It's it's so subjective and uh, individualized to, to what you your needs are. Now let's look at the GH4 internal stuff. So here's the internal shot. Now this one I did a little bit differently than the other ones. I kind of started with the, the same copy setting. So let's actually hide our waveforms there and let's go two up. So we can see ProRes HQ over here and I, I tuned this one. So this is, let's go for the GH4 internal. So I took this primary from the HQ and I just copied it to the internal. And you can see there's a, a color difference that's doing different stuff with the way the, the, the look is right out of the camera. So when you apply the exact same settings, it looks slightly different. But let's actually go for a grade that's more matching, closer matching. It's not perfect, but it's, it's closer than just copy and pasting. But one thing to really look for here is on this back wall, I don't know if you can see it, there's quite a bit of that cyan magenta issue you get with vlog l now i don't know if you've seen my other video where i talk about the problems with vlog l but that's something to look out for probably not anything anyone's really going to notice but if you're looking for it you can see it you also get some stuff in the carpet here where there's like some different color splotches that that really shouldn't be there probably and in the hq footage that is not there there's also some stuff color splotching wise like on my neck going on here in the internal shot which is not there in the HQ shot. And what else? On this window here, there's some more of that cyan, magenta, macro blocking, color blocking, whatever you want to call it, which is not here on the HQ. So there are differences. You are getting better quality. But when you just look at these shots, you know, with movement in an edit, no one is likely going to see those differences unless they're really really pixel peeping and even in terms of sharpness here we've got you know the the internal 4k stuff on the gh4 is pretty nice it's uh it looks good you know the uh, hq stuff in prores is a little sharper let's see if i can pull that up here and show you if this actually will work sorry my computer's a little slow because i'm screen recording and trying to show you this so there you see the sharpness is a little bit more with ProRes, but but at that point, you know, you're really just pixel peeping. So you do get the extra quality with the external recorder, but again, may or may not be worth it depending on your needs. This back wall definitely stood out to me. It, this screamed internal GH4 Vlog L codec. There are ways to fix this with some of the LUTs out there and some of the color tuning that you can do, but just doing these basic grades that I'm doing with these primaries, um, it shows itself pretty pretty frequently and we're not getting that on the external. So that is good to see. Good to see there is a, an upgrade. It's just in terms of the overall look, it is kind of minimal. Overall, I would say the Video Assist 4K is a good external recorder. It doesn't have quite as many features as some of the other devices out there on the market currently, but hopefully Blackmagic add those firmware upgrades like 
previewing LUTs on the monitor, like viewing in anamorphic, and a few of the other things. I did find the battery life a little disappointing, but a lot of these external recorders have that same problem. It is unfortunate that they use the LP6 batteries. I know they're really common, but they don't hold a lot of charge, and you can only get them in the one size, so you are a little limited in terms of the battery life, but thankfully there are two slots, so you can hot swap. I just wish there were some kind of warning feature that let you know when the batteries were getting low and that you should stop recording because I also found out that those clips that I recorded and the battery died, I couldn't recover them. Now, I, I'm, I could have tried maybe uh, to go into the actual review mode and see if there was some kind of you know fix broken clip feature, but unfortunately I formatted the card before that happened, so I wasn't able to check that, but I know on like the Atomos Ninja Assassin, that if if a, if a failure if a recording fails and you boot it back up you'll actually it'll give you a prompt that says do you want to fix the recording do you want to fix that error and it will let you do that in in the device itself the blackmagic video assist 4k didn't give me any option like that and so when i brought those files into the computer they were, it was just unrecognizable. There wasn't anything I could do with them. So that is a little bit unfortunate. Now, granted, you're probably not going to know that when you're filming and your battery dies that, oh, you should probably get new batteries and shoot the thing again. But if you are recording for an extended period of time and the batteries die because it doesn't warn you that it's about to die, and then that whole clip is toast, that is kind of unfortunate. So hopefully they implement some kind of firmware upgrade for the Video Assist 4K that'll add that kind of safety feature because that'd be really helpful, especially if you are running and gunning and mobile and you've got batteries. Yeah, you can hot swap them, but at the same time, you, you might not be paying attention or maybe you just need to get a shot and you're hoping that it happens and then your clip is gone, which is really unfortunate. So really, the Video Assist 4K right now it's not the best thing out there. I think there are probably other better external recorders or monitors right now. But if Blackmagic do these firmware upgrades, this will be a very, very, very good external recorder because I have all the features I, I want, the simplicity and the design. It's really nice that it uses SD cards. Now, the SD cards, the UHS-2 cards, Price per gig, they are more expensive than SSDs. So the Ninja Assassin, the Pixie 5, they use SSD drives. And those SSD drives, price per gig, are actually quite a bit cheaper than the UHS-2 cards. But the nice thing about the UHS-2 cards is that they're SD cards, so you can use them in the GH4 or in your camera, which likely takes SD cards, and in the external recorder. So you can kind of get double duty there with the SD cards. It is unfortunate that price per gig is a little bit more expensive right now, but hopefully over the next year or so, we'll see those prices come down as they always do. We know as technology advances, things get cheaper. So I would like to see those get a little bit cheaper so it's com more competitive with the SSDs. As it is currently, I would probably recommend if you're interested in getting the Video Assist 4K, maybe find a place to rent it and test it out and see if it's if it will work for your needs. I've tried to give as, as much coverage to this thing as possible, so I'm going through all the features, all the settings, and really uh, putting through its paces, and I like it. It's good. It's not great. It's got a little bit more ways to go, but hopefully all that can be addressed via firmware updates because the hardware is really good. Hardware is fantastic. Touchscreen is great. It's just a matter of getting those few extra features put into the firmware so that we can have all the fun that we want to have. Viewing LUTs, shooting anamorphic, being warned when the battery is about to die, all that would be really good. And then it'll make this a very lovely external recorder and monitor that I'm glad to have.